What's the word, y'all? One thing that all 30 teams should be thankful for. And I know, I'm releasing this video after Thanksgiving, but as a guy that's been making YouTube videos for about a decade now, there's three days every year I know I cannot upload on. It is the 4th of July, it is Thanksgiving, and it is Christmas. So though this video should have came out yesterday, it's happening today. I also recognize that Bleach Report put together their own list of things that teams should be thankful for. I did not look at their list. Everything that you see today is coming from my head. Let's start off with the 76ers. The thing that they should be thankful for the most is having Nick Nurse as a coach. Um, there was a video by Thinking Basketball that he put together showing the in-game adjustments that Nick Nurse did, specifically against the Detroit Pistons. But in-game adjustments is something that is new. Let's just say I'm not trying to talk bad about previous coaches like Doc Rivers and stuff, but in-game adjustments is just something notoriously the 76ers ain't really been been able to do so to have a coach in there that got these boys humming Joel Embiid is the system by himself now playmaking and doing all these things Nick Nurse is taking the 76 team to a whole new level next with the Milwaukee Bucks it's early, too early to know if Adrian Griffin is a good coach bad coach or somewhere in between but one thing that they should be thankful for is that he's not a stubborn coach earlier in the season they were playing a different kind of defensive coverage they went to Adrian and said hey we're used to playing this way this was our successful way and Adrian was like you know what you're right Damian Lillard said hey I don't really like the way you divvying up my minutes can I play the whole first quarter and a whole third quarter and Adrian was like for sure I mean that takes do we give him credit for that let's give him credit for that they got a coach right now that is okay with listening to his roster while we wait to see where he stands amongst all of the, the coaches involved Chicago Bulls it ain't a lot we're thankful for Alice Caruso. You know why? Because if the Bulls decide to break it all down with all these rumors about people not being interested in Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, at least we know that, that Alex Caruso is going to bring us back a return. That is where we are as fans. Yeah. The Cavaliers have had a ton of injuries over the course of this first month of the NBA season. The one thing they should be thankful for is Craig Porter Jr. That is a man that I did not know existed until a couple weeks ago, and he's turned into one of the better backup point guards in basketball as a undrafted rookie. That is a rare thing. They found a guy to add to the rotation, especially we consider like Ricky Rubio going out for personal reasons and stuff. To have another point guard that you can trust just is really important. I think the Celtics should be thankful that they were okay with change, right? When you look at the success that they've had over the last four or five years or so, maybe even longer, it, it would be easy for them to say, let's just run it back. Let's just run it back. Let's just run it back. This offseason, of course, they made some big time adjustments, trading away Marcus Smart, a person that felt like he was going to be a Celtic lifer, bringing in Drew Holiday, bringing in poor Zingas, and the, the team looks really good. There, there's some stuff that I'm still visually seeing them trying to grow in as, as a team. But being able to look themselves in the mirror and say our current core is good, but maybe not good enough and making the adjustments can go a long way and we'll figure that out come playoffs. With the Clippers, they should be thankful for Russell Westbrook's unselfishness. Is that a word? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, he was starting with the Clippers and playing some really good basketball after a year with the LA Lakers where it was terrible. And then obviously they made the James Harden trade. It didn't work for the first five or so games. And Russell Westbrook said, I take a step back. I'll come off the bench for the sake of the organization. And since then, the team has looked dramatically better. Not saying that Russell Westbrook was the problem in the starting lineup, but to divvy up those minutes where these guys can play here and he can play there has just changed things a bump. The Grizzlies, it's one of those teams that's not a lot <laughs> to be thankful for right now, but we're getting closer and closer to Ja coming back. What more, what more can I say? Just get close. Every day we are closer to Ja Morant coming back, and that is something to be thankful for. The Atlanta Hawks should be uh, very thankful for Jalen Johnson stepping into that starting lineup and looking really, really good. He was a guy before the season. If you watch or listen to the Kenny Beaton podcast, I put together a video of the most intriguing players coming up this season, and Jalen Johnson was on my list because I knew when John Collins being gone, they were going to have to make a, a decision between him and Sadiq Bay. And I was a Jalen Johnson fan because I thought his playmaking, his defense, and his his um, finishing and transition was all things they could have used and he's looked amazing so far this season um i think he genuinely is a most approved player candidate i think there are some people that are above him but he's in the conversation miami he should be thankful for i guess a couple different things you know bam out of bio is looking better than ever but Duncan Robinson is the thing I got on my list because Duck, not only is Duncan Robinson back, but he has evolved as a player where he's putting the ball on the floor, getting to the basket, taking more two-pointers than he's ever had in his career, just becoming a more of a threat outside of I'm a catch and shoot. The Hornets, I could call a couple different directions. I, I wanted to go uh, with, with LaMelo Ball still being great because there were some conversations on Twitter and in podcasting about LaMelo Ball as a player, which I never understood. LaMelo Ball is a hooper. But also, I'm going to give it to Brandon Miller because when he was drafted second overall, 
overall, there are a lot of people that were like, man, they just made the wrong decision. School Henderson, School Henderson. And I'm not writing off School Henderson, but Brandon Miller has looked really, really good through the first month of his NBA career. The Jazz was a, di a difficult one for me. The Jazz was a difficult one, partially because I haven't watched a ton of Utah Jazz full games this season. I've watched highlights and moments and stuff. But they traded for John Collins for maybe a couple different reasons. One of them might have been the Reclamation Project. And though he hasn't looked perfect, the three-point shooting is encouraging. I don't know if it's sustainable, but John Collins was a player that was a good three-point shooter. Then he messed up his finger. Then he missed all of the shots. Now he's back to shooting above average from three. Again, I don't know if it's sustainable or anything, but that just adds another element to his game if you're going to keep him or trade him away way later for the Kings to watch Keegan Murray step up defensively as their stopper has been encouraging um it's not perfect all the time considering he's a year two player but there's a lot of moments where I've watched the Sacramento Kings I'm like yeah this guy is really after it his jump shot has not fallen much this year but that is okay at the moment because they're still winning basketball games but to have a guy that's taking the responsibility uh he guarded Luca the other day like that is that's big with the Knicks it has to be Mitchell Robinson you know you know what you get it from Jalen Brunson you know it, it's been a I want to say rocky start, but maybe not as great of a start as for him and Julius Randle. Mitchell Robinson has been as consistent as ever. When you have a person averaging that many offensive rebounds and getting that many second chance points for his team, it goes a very long way. Offensively on the glass and defensively as a as an anchor of a good defense, he's been incredible like LeBron James right now has his highest true shooting percentage of his career and he's going on 40. It makes no sense. The amount of times just this year alone where we saw him take over a fourth quarter or stuff. These are things that people normally are not doing in year 21. There's never been a player to be able to do this in year 21. And you always wonder, like, when is he going to slow down? And though he's not the same player he was in 2016, he's still one of the best players in all the association. And he's almost 40. It makes no sense. And they should be thankful because if LeBron was not here, boy, if LeBron was not here, but he is here, so it's okay. We made a whole video about the Orlando Magic, but the one thing they should be thankful for is that the defense that they're putting together is real. They just won the game against the, the Denver Nuggets, so five-game win streak, and everything is looking good in Orlando right now. For the Mavs, Luka Doncic has been a player that has played himself into shape every single season, except for this one, partially probably because of FIBA, so he played all summer, but he came in and immediately put his, his foot on the gas, and the Dallas Mavericks have one of the best offenses in basketball. It reminds me of like the Sacramento Kings of last year, where the offense is so elite that the defense not being great is okay at the moment and right now what we've seen because of the Sacramento Kings last year is that if you have that combination you can become a real team in ball does that mean championship team I don't really know but having Luka in shape from game number one means a ton because Mikel Bridges started off the season slow uh the the Brooklyn Nets have needed people to step up obviously Cam was doing r ridiculous stuff before he got injured but then Cam got injured and the next man stepped up which was Lonnie Walker so because they have such a deep team they have somebody to basically replace any, any shoes, which is cool. I know they're currently sub 500, but still, you know, having that form of depth goes a long way. There's no championship hangover for the Denver Nuggets. And that's right. I swear, I feel like every single time a team is coming off a championship that the year after they start off slow, first month, first two months of the season, not 500, but still not playing at the caliber of a team that just won the championship. The Denver Nuggets said, no, we're keeping our foot on the gas too, even though we got Jamal Murray injured and so on and so forth. So that goes a long way. I think part of it is because of the way Mike Malone has talked about this team over the last couple of years. Um, and I'm sure his coaching has gone a long way to not be satisfied with just one. The Pacers should be thankful that they have one of the, one of the best engines in all the basketball. You see, because Pacers is like a a racing thing, and I said engines. Um, the, the Tyrese Halliburton has been ridiculous this year. All NBA caliber player. Uh, I would tell everybody to tune into as many Pacers games as possible because you never really know what you're gonna get. This team is gonna run. They're gonna throw lobs. They're gonna hit three point shots. And he as himself has been a system this season, um, which is something that maybe not a lot of people expected coming out of the draft, or he would have went higher number four. The team that had the fourth pick, you go do your research. You know what team that is. The Pelicans being able to stay afloat with Jose Alvarado being out. He just came back to show, shout out Jose. With having CJ out with a collapse line. With having Trey Murphy the third out. With having uh, Larry Nance out recently. Them being able to stay afloat is something to be to be thankful for. Eventually, Trey Murphy will come back. They've had other shooters step up. Like um, the rookie Jayhawk, shout out to him. They had Matt Ryan step up. And now Matt Ryan is injured. So they've had the worst injury luck this season but they're still winning basketball games Brandon Ingram and Zion are looking good together finally because we're finally getting to see them play for more just than just a couple games here and a couple games there for the Pistons 
It's a, it's a rough time right now, Pistons fans. The last couple years have not been pretty. But if there's one thing to be thankful for, it is a Sar Thompson. Because he's looked like the third best rookie in his class, you know, behind Chet Wimby. Okay, you get me. Defensively, he's one of the better wing defenders in all of basketball. And we're talking about a player that's playing NBA hoops for a month now. So, like, it's not a lot of great things happening in Detroit. But right now, you got that. The Raptors should be thankful for Scotty Barnes' breakout because I think it just makes it easier for them to pick a direction. I don't know what that direction is going to be. But if Scotty would have came into this year looking exactly the same as last, then I thought they would have had some bigger questions to answer, not just the OG or Pascal Siakam questions, but deeper than that. But now we know that they are trying to build around Scotty Barnes. At least that's what it seems like. Uh, th that just helps them out. It helps Messiah out figure out if he's going to trade Pascal and for what pieces. Is he going to trade OG on Anobia? Try to bring OG on Anobi back because I think Scotty and OG can coexist. But just having Scotty break out as the, the guy that won the rookie of the year and took a step back the year after, year number three has been amazing. The Rockets should be so very thankful to not be towards the bottom anymore. Like, this is a team that has real play-in slash playoff potential, which is something they haven't had in a, in a while. It's a team that's been towards the top of the lottery for the last couple years. So this goes to what coaching can do and adding good vets in the locker room can change things. They also should be thankful that um, Alperen Shingun looks like the guy. You feel me? It's, it's rare that you get a the guy type player, and Alperen Shingun might be that for them. The Spurs should be thankful that they won the lottery. As of right now, there's not a ton of other things to, to, be, to be thankful for. You got Wimby. You know, still be thankful for that. A lot of teams don't get the opportunity to win the lottery in a generational draft. The Suns should be thankful for A, Kevin Durant playing like an MVP, but B, when Booker has played, we, we all question, like, with them not having a true point guard, how are they going to take care of these responsibilities? Devin Booker was like, who, does, who, who don't got a true point guard? Oh, okay. He's averaging like 10 assists per game throughout the games he's played. And I think he's averaged a two and a half a, a turnover. So, like, his assist to turnover ratio is really good. He's also still giving you 28, 29 points per game. I'm going to say they should be thankful for Kevin holding them afloat and playing like an MVP. And then Booker kind of silencing the noise on, like, the no true point guard who's going to run point guard for us. Rough couple days for Thunder fans. I understand that. But they should, should still be thankful that they hit the next jump. It is, I think most of us anticipated the OKC Thunder to take the next jump. There's a lot of pressure to make that a reality. You know what I'm saying? When everybody is saying, this is the young team that's going to hit the next step. And for them to do it is something to be thankful for. I'll leave it at that on Thunder. The Wolves should be thankful that Carthony Towns has been back. The last five or six games of the season, Carthony Towns has been a better playmaker, a better defender, a better scorer. He's looking like the all-star, all-NBA player that we saw three year, or two, three years ago. And that's just great because it was a little bit scary for a little bit. It, it was scary for a little bit. So to see him turn into the version of himself we know he can be just goes a long way. And that is why, one of the reasons why this team has been able to be as successful as it has been through the first month of the year. The Blazers should be thankful for Jeremy Grant still looking really good. You know, they gave that man a bunch of money. Then 24 hours later, Damian Lillard said, peace says, I want out. And a lot of us were questioning like, oh, that's a big contract for Jeremy Grant. How many teams might be interested, so on and so forth. If they are looking to trade away Jeremy Grant come February, I think the way he is playing right now, teams will be able to look past the contract, the guaranteed years, the guaranteed money, because his production has been so good. His three-point shooting has been so good. He looks like a player that can slide onto all of the other 29 teams and play a significant role. And that is something they should be thankful for because it is a lot of money. The Warriors still have a 4.67 net rating with Steph Curry off the floor. That is the highest of his NBA career. Again, things ain't perfect in San Francisco right now. But at least you know that when Stephen Curry is resting, you're not hemorrhaging on the offensive or defensive side of the ball. And lastly, I'm sorry, Wizards fans, you always become last. Y'all decided to name your organization with a W. You used to be the Bullets. That, you would have been towards the top if you say the Bullets. Um, but Lau Kulabali is not as raw of a prospect as a lot of people anticipated. He's, he's shown a lot of stuff in his first month of his NBA career. The three-point shot looks real. Um, at the moment, I don't know. The teams aren't really guarding him out there just yet. But he's making them pay early on in his career, which is really, really dope. And though I'm not an NBA team, I am extremely thankful for y'all. Um, I've been making, again, YouTube videos for like a decade now. And a lot of people that get into YouTube, that make it their full-time job, don't get the opportunity to do it for as long as I have. So I'm extremely thankful that you click on this video or any other video I've ever produced, the podcast episodes and so on and so forth. Y'all have changed my life, obviously, and I'm 100% grateful for all of the support and all the love that y'all showed uh, me just over, I don't know, the love of basketball. And some of y'all was supporting when it wasn't basketball, which is crazy. So again, I am extremely thankful um, 
for the last couple years, and I want to continue to go bigger and bigger and bigger, y'all. I got some big old plans for 2024, and some of them are coming real, and they wouldn't become real if it wasn't for you. So I do want to say thank you so much, and let me know what you think. Uh, what else should your favorite team be thankful for? As always, I'll be in those comment sections.